Good morning and welcome to Knitting Blooms. Today is December 17th and this is episode, what, 34. And as you can hear, probably, I still have a cold. It is just hanging on. It's crazy. Um, I got the cold last Thursday before I recorded on Saturday and it has just been hanging on. Thursday, this past Thursday, I thought I was getting a little bit better and then Thursday night I seem to have another relapse with the coughing. So I don't know what's happening with this cold. It might have morphed into an infection so I might be going to the doctor next week but we'll have to see what happens. I'm feeling okay. I just have the cough and the sinus congestion and whatnot. But other than that, I'm feeling okay. I'm not. I haven't. I haven't done any exercise or anything like that. But um, I need to need to get back to that. I'm wondering if I get back to it. If I just do some walking or something, if it will help burn it off. Who knows? We'll see how this weekend goes, and then maybe <clears throat> I will be better next week. I hope so, because it's Christmas. Anyway, welcome to the show. Oops, maybe I shouldn't put that there. Welcome to the show. If you are a previous viewer, welcome. And if you are a new viewer, welcome as well. I hope you enjoy the show today. I have um, a bit of progress to show you on my projects. And I have some of the prizes that are going to be coming up in some of the new drawings. The new drawings. Some of the drawings that are going to happen in January and February. Um, I want to mention a iPhone app and there's news about a yarn diet for me. Hmm. I wonder, is that going to be possible? I hope so because I've been on a spending spree lately and I'm supposed to be de-stashing. Um, what else? I have a podcast shout out and I'm going to uh, talk about tagging projects and Ravelry. So that's what's on the agenda for today. So let's get started. I'm going to start with spinning today because I haven't talked about spinning in the last few weeks and I kind of got the spinning bug again this week and it just went really crazy with the spinning. I started my fiber for the Knit Girl Spin Along Knit Along. It must have been like the second week in November. Um, second or third week in November. I can't remember exactly when I started it. But I didn't do much, I didn't make much progress on it right away. I was just kind of doing it and then I kind of felt like there was no way that I was going to get the yarn, the, the yarn spun or the fiber spun and then knit the project. Then I realized earlier this week that the knit along I believe runs until the end of February. So I thought you know what if I can get the fiber spun up by the end of December there's no reason why I can't knit a project by the end of February. That's it's a long time because I we got the fiber around the first week of January or first week of November and like I said, I didn't get it started right away because I was at Knitting in the Mitten and then there were some other things that happened right after that and I don't think I started it um, for another week or two after that. But, um, but I, yeah, I figured if I, could get the fab, if I could get the fiber spun by the end of December, then that would still give me two months to, to knit the project. So I kind of this week just made an effort to spin a little bit every night and on some nights I was planning on spending uh, at least 45 minutes every night and on some nights I kind of was really enjoying it so I spun for a couple hours I didn't knit much in the evening which means that I don't have as much progress as I would like on my knitting but I finished my knit curl fiber and here it is um, I was spinning it a little thicker than when I spun the last uh, fiber. This is 
the Polworth and the colorway is Haunted Vineyard and I really like the colorway. Now this, my particular bat of fiber um, or bump or whatever you want to call it <clears throat> had a little bit more yellow in it than the other colors and the other one that I have because I ordered two four ounce bumps and the other one had less of the yellow. I spun this one first because I wasn't sure how I was going to spin it and I'm still kind of not sure how I'm going to apply it. At this very moment I'm gearing towards plying it to ply. It's all in one bobbin. I'm going to take it off of the bobbin and then split it into two, two um, center pull balls so I can, I can ply it. Um, I finished it last night and I have to say that I think that this is fairly consistent. Um, for the very first time, I actually did like a, a, um, a fiber card. And it really is just a couple pieces of paper that I've put to, have together and then I snipped, I snipped the ends so that I could tuck a piece of fiber in there. And so what I did, the first day that I started spinning it, and look, I do have a day that I started this. It was December 4th. So it hasn't been, it wasn't even in November that I started spinning it. So December 4th I started it and I don't know how well you'll be able to see this. I'll try and take a picture of it so then I can um, put it in there so I can show you. December 4th I have the gold and, <clears throat> excuse me, it is a little bit thicker than the other ones. but. Overall, I think that it's the most consistent. And what I did was, on the 4th I did it, and I put a sample. That was the first day I started spinning. And then, I think the next day or two, I put I put these other two. I didn't label. They're the ones that are directly next to it here. I didn't label what days those were. <clears throat> um, but then, here, this one on this end is the 11th. I'm sorry, did I say November? December. December 4th. And then this one's December 11th. And then this one on this end is December 13th. And they are pretty consistent. I'm sure that there's going to be spots that are um, a little bit thicker or a little bit thinner than the rest of it. But just, I mean, I just looking at the bobbin just on the top layer here, it looks pretty darn consistent. And like I said, Every time I would stop, I would I would be spinning. I'd stop for a second and kind of lay my fiber over my card here to see how I'm getting with the consistency with these other strands. And if I needed to to, to focus on drafting a little bit more fiber into my into my um, drafting zone, I don't know how you say that. I'm still so new at spinning, but. If I noticed that I was getting a little bit on the thin side, I would just focus on making sure that there was a little bit more fiber drafted in to, to start spinning it. <clears throat> so I liked having this card, and I think that I'm going to try and do this in the future. I don't know if all spinners do this. I know that I've heard, um, I think, A Cat in Her Yarn, her podcast, she talks about using these cards. I don't know if she uses them all the time or just on specific fibers or what. But this is just a stack of a note, a, um, a scratch pad that I have, you know, five or six sheets in here to make it sturdy enough because putting the yarn in there wasn't going to be sturdy on one sheet of paper. But um, I think I'm going to get some like index cards or something like that so I can do this a little bit easier in the future. But I'm really happy about that. And I will be plying this this weekend. Like I said, I've gone back and forth about whether I want to ply it Navajo ply to keep the colors together or if I want to to ply it. And I think I decided which, which pattern I was going to use, but I can't remember which one it was um, at this moment. But I think, I think right now I'm thinking the two ply because I think there's a triangular, triangular shawl that I want to do and I like the way that the the when you two ply it kind of makes a striping effect now 
the Navajo ply might make a striping effect, but I don't know if my color my color color sections are long enough to make a stripe. So <clears throat> I think I'm gonna go with the Navajo ply. I mean uh, the two ply on this one. And it is gonna be a little bit thicker than my last one, so I'm really not sure how much yardage I'm gonna get. I'm hoping that I get enough for that triangular shawl. We'll see how it goes. I mean, I guess I could break into the second four ounce bump to um, if I need more fiber, but I was hoping to make another project with that, possibly the um, fingerless mitts at some point. So that's my spinning. I haven't spun anything on the drop spindle in quite a while. I think that I'm going to focus on spinning that in these coming weeks because it would be nice to be able to ply that up as well. So I'm, I'm not sure if I'm going to put something new on my wheel or if I'm just going to focus on taking the drop spindle to work with me and spinning that at work for an hour or two or whenever I have kind of have time to spin at work. Um, I'll have to see if I'm, I probably will put something on my wheel, but I don't know if I'll make it a, a priority. It'll be kind of like if I don't feel like knitting, then I like, might do some spinning. We'll see how it goes. Okay, so let's get in to the knitting projects. I have been doing some knitting, and <clears throat> I've been wanting to do I'm going to try and talk low because I don't know if my husband's going to be listening. He can't really hear very well, so I don't think he's going to hear me from up there. But I've been, um, he's right in the kitchen, so it's just up the stairs. So anyway, unless he has his hearing aids in, I don't think he's going to hear me. But um, I've been wanting to knit a hat for him this year. I haven't knit him a hat in a couple of years. I usually try and, the last couple years when I first started knitting, I, um tried to knit him a hat every year for Christmas and I didn't do that last year I, or I think maybe even the year before I'm not sure so this year I wanted it in a hat and um, I forget what it's called now but it's I think it's the basic let me see if I can grab it on Ravelry really quick um, <clears throat> it's the um, Let me see if I can. The pattern name is Basic Lined Hat Pattern Directions by Elise Cohen, I think it's how you say her name. Um, and <clears throat> I did, I started it and I got this far. And it really is a pattern where you have two hats basically you you cast on it is a free pattern so I'm not gonna reveal any secrets here but um you cast on a provisional cast on you knit a few rows you knit one hat this way and then you pick up stitches and you knit the other way now if you go and look at this pattern you will see that <clears throat> the cool thing about this hat is it's reversible and one reason why I wanted to do this hat like this is because the other motif is kind of graphic and um, I'm going to show you that motif in a minute but I just want to warn you that it is kind of graphic and if you're easily <clears throat> offended or you have children in the room you may want to ask them to leave um, <clears throat> but I did start it with some yarn that I had and I didn't like how it was working up. The red yarn in this hat was a little bit thicker than the black. And I knew that going in when I put the yarns next to each other and when I started knitting with them, I thought, I don't know if this is really going to work. But I went ahead and, and knit the hat. Obviously, it's done. Well, not technically done because I have to do something with the bottom because it is a provisional cast on. But um, I really didn't like how it was turning out. Now, I did go ahead and wet this and try and block it out a little bit and stretch it. And it does look halfway decent. However, I really wasn't happy with how it turned out. So I did go and buy some more um, Red Heart yarn. 
um, to use and I got Red Heart um, Soft. But I do like the hat pattern. I did change it slightly. She has a different decrease at the top, but the decrease that she was providing was going to mean a much taller hat. And I already felt like this was tall enough. I mean, I put this hat on and it fit me. And <clears throat> because it's going to be double lined, I thought that's going to be too big. It's going to be too tall. So, and I measured some of my husband's other hats and this was about the same, the same thing. Um, length. So I did a different decrease. I did a um, knit six decrease. <clears throat> so it's a spiral decrease. I'm not sure if you'll be able to see that on the top. So it's a spiral decrease on the top. Um, instead, I think she has like a, a decrease every four, not every four stitches. Um, I think it's four decreases around. This is eight, I think. Yeah, this is eight decreases around. So I doubled the amount of decreases uh, so that I could decrease it a little quicker. But let me show you the other part, which is actually the naughty part. So if you, like I said, if you are easily offended or um, you have children in the room, you may want to ask them to leave. And <clears throat> here it is. I saw this motif and I thought my husband would really get a kick out of it. And like I said, what's nice about this is that if he needs to be politically correct, he can flip it the other way and wear the hat or flip it this way and, you know, impress his friends that his wife can knit color work. Who knows? Um, I think he's going to really love it. I do have to knit the the other side. It's going the inside is going to look like this. I'm going to reverse the colors. Um, I will have to do that. I have to finish the top. Obviously, it's on double points. I was working on it yesterday at work, and the guys at work thought I was really sick. <laughs> and it's not me. I think my husband would would really get a kick out of it. That's why I knit it. It is not definitely not something that I would gravitate to other than the fact that my husband kind of has a sick, sick sick sense of humor so he would get a kick out of it and really it's the hats for him so that's all that matters so yeah so here's the hat um it didn't take that long to knit this one I started on Monday and I think I finished maybe Tuesday or Wednesday I can't remember I think I think I might have finished it Wednesday because I think I took it to work with me Tuesday and got all the way up to where I needed to decrease, but I didn't have my double points with me, so I couldn't decrease decrease them. Um, and then so Wednesday I brought my double points to work with me. So I was able to finish it up on Wednesday, and I started this hat on Wednesday. And I have a little bit too many stitches right now to be messing with this on the needles, but... Um, but the decrease is almost done. I have a couple rows of decreases. But the outside of this hat will look like this. The reds and the blacks will be switched. So I'm hoping to get that done. I can't really work on it too much at work. I mean at home because, you know, if he sees me working on anything red and black, um, I think he would know that it was for him because he is a huge Red Wing fan and everything that I knit him is red and black. Because his coats, everything he has is red wing. Anyway, um, <clears throat> one thing I do want to mention about this is that there are sections with very long color um, places where the there's no color. Like the black is not here, but it's over here. And what I try to do... Um, I did not worry about how big the floats are, and I can't really show you on this one. And this one, they're not as long. But I didn't worry too much about the floats because um, I knew that the hat was going to be, you know, because this hat will be like this. It's going to be connected like this, and then this one will shove inside this one, so it will cover up those floats. 
So I didn't worry too much about having the long floats. The only thing I worried about was to make sure that the the float was loose enough so that the things weren't going to pucker. Now, you may be able to see on this now, it kind of looks like it's puckering a little bit. But this one looked like it was puckering a little bit as well before I wet blocked it and um, laid it flat. And now it looks pretty good. So I think this one is going to be okay too because I did, I did really try to make my floats quite loose. So I think I'm going to be okay. I think it just looks like it's going to be puckery. But um, what I also did was I kind of stuck my fingers in, so I had the yarn wrapping around the um, around my fingers when I was knitting so that the floats would have a little bit more give. So hopefully that will help. But yeah, it's coming along. I, I think I, like I said, I think I started this on Wednesday and um, I've just been working on it at work. And I just, I just think my husband's going to get a real kick out of it. So on these two hats, <clears throat> this one, I knit 191 yards. And I am going to do something a little different. I'm not sure. I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to take out this, um, this garter stitch edging because that's what's on here now. And I think what I'm going to do is just pick up some stitches um, just above it cut the garter stitch off and then just knit a rib because I'm not going to knit the other side of this hat because um, I'm going to do this one and this one um, I didn't like the yarn so I'm not going to do the other side of this one so I think I'll just finish it off so that it can be actually used and this one I will actually knit this part for this hat and I'm losing stitches again I tried to get this done yesterday afternoon and my boss came back to the office and I got busy in the afternoon so I wasn't able to finish it. I mean I literally probably have 20 minutes of work on this hat to go <clears throat> and then I can pick up the stitches on the bottom. So what did I do with my other needle? Uh oh. It's somewhere around here. Oh here it is. So that's the hat for the husband. So maybe I'll get a chance to finish that up today. Oh, did I tell you? I did tell you that it's early morning. I don't remember if I told you why I'm recording early morning again. Um, and the reason is, is because we're having a home energy audit today. <clears throat> the guy's coming at nine o'clock and I just wanted to get this, get this done. So I could enjoy the rest of the day. I mean, I don't mind getting up early so I can do my podcast um, because I I really enjoy doing it. But I don't like to be strapped for time. So I prefer to get up early and get it out of the way so that I can enjoy the rest of the weekend and not have to be stressed if something doesn't go quite right. Um, <clears throat> so, yeah. I'm okay with getting up at 7 o'clock in the morning, or actually I got up today at 6.30. But um, I I would like to sleep in this, on a Saturday sometime soon. The last three Saturdays have been early morning recording, so I'm hoping that maybe by next week things will settle down in my life. I don't know why Christmas time gets so busy, and we don't really do a lot. I mean, I know a lot of people have holiday parties and... Um, work parties and stuff like that we don't really do a lot of that kind of stuff my office doesn't have their Cody's back here scraping on the glass my part my office doesn't have their office party until January typically every year we talk about having it and getting it done in December but one of the guys has the, has a big um holiday party at the beginning of December and then the second weekend this this weekend coming up um, my boss does something and then <clears throat> at that point you're already getting close to Christmas and it's like there's too many other things going on so we typically wait till January to have our holiday party at work okay 
So we talked about the hats. The first hat I did 190 91 yards. The second hat I forgot to add them together, but um, it's about 140 yards that I haven't finished yet. Um, oops. I did work on the slippers, slippers pair number 25. I didn't bring them over here. They're over there. There's not much to show you. I did work on them a tiny bit. This is the pair that's like for size 13 feet. <coughs> Excuse me. So they're taking a little longer than I expected. Um, but they are going to be a Christmas present, so they have to be done. I probably will focus on those as well as the additional pair of um, slippers, women's size slippers that I need to knit for Christmas. Those will be done this weekend, I'm sure. Um, <clears throat> yeah. So, and I haven't added that slipper yardage that for those big slippers into my yardage yet. Because as I was looking back on last week, I added in the slippers that I finished last week, but I didn't add up the whip yardage that I had already done. And this week I thought, well, I'll just wait and add it up when it, when they're done. So I didn't add the yardage for that this week. So I don't know how much yardage I've worked on. Um, the next thing is Citron, which I think is in this bag. And I actually got a bit of progress on this. Last week I mentioned that <clears throat> the reason I was recording early on Saturday was because we had to go to a Christmas um, concert at um, my in-laws church only to find out that the concert was on Sunday anyway so my, I got you know I we were all ready to go we got in the car we went down to the church we pulled into the lot and we're like where is everybody and then my husband thought about looking at the tickets <clears throat> and it wasn't until Sunday so then we had to go and do it all over again on Sunday but on Sunday when we did go I took Citron, Citron to work on because I knew it was going to be um, a pretty mindless project and I could just sit there and enjoy the music and work on it so here you go I finished section four here's my marker I did all of this I I was a few rows shy of finishing section three and I finished section three I started I I finished section three I started and finished section four and I have also started section five um, I think I'm only on row two on section five I'm getting ready to start row three now the things that I did different this week <clears throat> first of all I think it was last week that Steve mentioned when Callie was talking about her Citron because um, Steve finished his a few weeks ago when Callie was talking about her Citron I think they mentioned that um, they were off on a few rows and you know what it really doesn't make a difference on this pattern I think there was one row that I wasn't quite right I think I had the right number of stitches but I think I did my increase in the wrong spot so when I got to the end of the row I was a stitch or two short of what I needed to be um, but who's gonna notice if you're if your stitch if your increase was supposed to be here or one stitch over anyway so I've really enjoyed this pattern now that I'm thinking about it in terms of simplicity because when I first started this and I'm looking at the pattern I'm thinking oh man I'm gonna have to follow this pattern for you know seven sections because I'm planning on doing seven sections and now and then count rows and all of that now I look at it and think why am I making this so difficult because it's really not it's all stockinette with a few rows that have increases or decreases so I just have to remember which rows have increases and decreases and just do them I mean it's not it's not difficult the other thing that I did with this project this week is that I took them off my circular needles I know circular needles are the bomb but you know what 
I like my Knit Picks. The circular needles just have a sort of coating on them that I just can't get past. And with this yarn, it just seemed to stick. Cody, come here. It just seemed to stick. Come up here. And I was getting very frustrated with it. Come on. Come on. So I switched over to the back to the knit picks. And you know what? I'm really happy with it. I still love the circular needles, but for this yarn, I felt like the knit picks was where I needed to be. So I am on section five. I think I'm on section five. Yeah, I'm on section five. Six sections are written for the pattern, and I am going to do a seventh section before I add my ruffle. I think that's all I wanted to talk about on Citron today. Let me just double check these notes over here. Again, this week I um, took notes on my phone, and there's still a lot of things on my phone that I'm not going to talk about this week because I have so much to talk about on other things. I'll bring them up as I can. So yeah, so I removed the signature needles and <clears throat> you it's not that big of a deal if you're a stitch off or two. So if you haven't knit this pattern and you're thinking about knitting it but it looks intimidating, really, it's not. It's not. You just it it really is a simple pattern and if you think about it as a simple pattern it'll be easy to do. I still have quite a bit of yarn. This is still the first ball. Um, and I do have another ball and I think I'm only going to do seven, but I'm going to have to see what my, I think I, I don't think I have enough to do eight sections. So I'll probably be seven, but I still have quite a bit of this one. So we'll, we'll see how that goes. <coughs> So that's Citron, and I did do um, 65 yards on that this week. And let me tell you, getting the yardage on fingering and lace weight yarn is not quick. No, it's not. Uh, Sam, uh, Cody, please don't move the camera. Come over here. Come over here. Come on. Come on. Sit here. Yes, I know. You're fine. Okay, so yeah, that's Citron. Mm. Sit still. The next thing, are you going to lay down? The next thing we'll talk about is Stinky Pink. And seriously, lay, just lay down. I'm trying to get him to settle down. Um, just lay down. You're fine. You want to lay down right there? And seriously, I really wanted to get this pat this mitten done, and I didn't, because I did not listen to my own instincts. <clears throat> I was knitting along on this last weekend, and I got to just past the tail, just to, well, I guess just about where the tail is. No, we're not going to play with that. <clears throat> Cody. <laughs> anyway, this tail on the skunk, it, it's about right there. I tried it on. Excuse me, that is not yours. Stop. I tried it on, and... It was right about, <clears throat> it was just a little bit, it see you, uh, you can see that it's just a little bit short of my pinky. And <clears throat> I don't know what told me to start decreasing or not, yeah, <clears throat> something in my head that I've read before, maybe it was another mitten pattern, maybe it was Valerie talking about how she does her patterns, I'm not sure. But something made me think that I needed to start decreasing when 
I got to the tip of my pinky finger. <clears throat> and I said, okay. And I just kept working. <clears throat> and, <clears throat> excuse me. So, I kept working. And I kept working in pattern. And knit, 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 knit. Well, I got to the point where I was going to start decreasing. And I was way up here at the tip of my fingers. And I thought, this is going to be way too big. Because there's probably, I don't know, I don't have the pattern right here, but at least 10 rows of decreases. <clears throat> I think more than that, though. So I thought, you know what? This mitten is going to be too long. And it's probably because my stitch gauge is off. Which is fine, but you need to be able to adjust the pattern to fit your hand. So what I did, I have a picture before I ripped it out, and I'll show it to you, to prove that I did, in fact, knit more on these mittens. <clears throat> I ripped it back to just where the black stops and the... No, actually I ripped back a whole section of black because there's another patterning section here before the pink starts. But I decided to go ahead and start the pink and start decreasing right away. <clears throat> There's a whole, I think it was like 8 to 10 rows that I ripped back that I'm just cutting right out of the pattern. Which I think will be fine. I just have to remember to do it on the next one too. But I really, really, really love how these are coming out. It, they fit nice and snug. They're going to be so, so warm. I just want to finish one mitten for you guys. So hopefully... If I can get the Christmas knitting done that I need to get done, the hat, the two pairs of slippers, um, a couple more dishcloths, and maybe a toy. <clears throat> Hopefully I'll have a mitten done for you next week. But that's a lot of Christmas knitting that has to get done before next Saturday. So we'll see. If not this week, then definitely next week. So... It's coming along. I did, like I said, I did do more than this, but this is all I have to show because I ripped it back. I'll have the picture. I'll post it um, to show you. On this project, <coughs> excuse me, not including the part that I ripped back, I knit 30 yards because actually I knit more than that. But I had to rip it back. And I still have a huge amount of yarn. I mean, I am not even halfway through the balls of yarn for this one mitten. And I still, you know, so you could make more than two mittens out of out of the balls for, for this. This is palette, Knit Picks palette. But yeah, trying to accumulate yardage on fingering and lace weight not so easy to do. <clears throat> the last project that I'm currently working on is Magrathea, which is the knit-along. Oh, and the, the, the mitten knit-along, too. So if you're working on that, um, get those projects posted as you finish them, because I'm very excited to see those. <clears throat> Magrathea is the other knit-along that we're doing with Mommy Needs Yarn, and I did quite a bit in this, too. It's hard to kind of tell because of how the the pattern works. You start at this corner and you knit and then you're kind of knitting on the bias. Oh, that's my phone. So you're knitting on the bias. So <clears throat> the easiest way to tell how much work you've done is <clears throat> just following the lace work. So here's my marker and here's the end. So this is what I had done before. And then this is what I've done since then. See, if you, if you pull it out here, this is, this whole row here is where you are. So really you've done, I've done this much <clears throat> from the marker to the end of the lace. And again, I am absolutely loving the Volmais. I am so glad that I have a bit of a stash because if I only had one or two skeins of it, 
I would definitely be hoarding it. <clears throat> and I would not want to knit it because I would want to find the absolute perfect project. And yeah. So I'm glad I have a bit of a stash of full mice because it will encourage me to knit on it more. And I did find out from Valerie yesterday. Valerie, she does the mittens, but she's also addicted to wool mice. She does all of her mittens in wool mice. But the wool mice is on a Christmas holiday until, I think she said the second week of January, like the 13th or something like that. So we don't have to worry about any spontaneous purchases of Volmise other than from D-Stash. But we'll get to the yarn diet in a minute. <clears throat> so I did make quite a bit of progress. Let's see how many, how many points that I did. Um, <clears throat> one, <clears throat> one, two, three, four, five points this week. So it's coming right along. I've used about one third of the yarn. And I have to check the pattern. I know on the hitchhiker, you have to wait until you have like six grams of yarn left because it's really just a decrease. But on this pattern, you have some lace edging on that other side as well. So you need a little bit more yardage. And I was thinking that I would, I think it says, wait till you have 30 grams left. However, I am concerned because I went up a needle, a couple needle sizes than what was called for in the pattern. So I'm wondering if I'm going to need more yard, more grams than what is called for. And at this moment, my plan is to knit until I have one third of the ball left, which would be about 50 grams. That's 20 grams more than what I need. And see how much that is. And see how far along I am and how big the scarf is. <clears throat> and then determine if I'm going to knit more on it. Because if this is one third, it's going to be quite, quite long, I think. So we'll see how it goes. I might knit until I have 40 grams. I'm just going to have to wait and see until I get there to see how quickly things get eaten up because this garter stitch gets bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger until you start to do the, the lace edging on the other end. So I am loving it. I love the yarn. I think that the lace pattern gets lost in the variegation, but I think that in the end when I block it out, I think it'll still look really nice and I think I'll love it. So that's Magrathea. And I did do 181 yards on that this week. Actually, <clears throat> I don't think that was all this week because last week I didn't add up my yardage on my whips and some of that was done last week. But based on the size of the original ball and the current size of the ball, there's been 181 yards knit on it to count towards my stash down. So, speaking of stash down, I think I am closer to completing it than I actually thought. This week, in my knitting, and I obviously haven't done any knitting for hire, haven't done any for a couple weeks now, this week I knit 610 yards, not including the, sw the slippers that I still have to count that I haven't counted, there's probably, when those slippers are done, there's going to be at least 700 yards in there. Because those are the big, big slippers. Um, which I haven't counted. And to date, I went back and I looked, to date I have knit, knit, not anything to do with D-Stash, because I know that I've included options to, to, to bump your yardage by doing D-Stash and gift knitting and um, charity knitting and whatnot. But I personally wanted to knit 6,000 yards for my stash. To date, I have knit, including this week's yardage, not including the, the slipper yardage, again, not including the slipper yardage, I have knit 4,944 yards, 44 and a half yards. 
So that's nearly 5,000 yards. I have 1,055 and a half yards to go. That is so doable. And what I have like two weeks, two weeks left to go. And I have probably close to 700 yards in that those slippers. So I really only have about 300 yards to go on meeting my goal for the stash down. Sorry about that. <clears throat> so yeah, so I'm a lot farther along than I really expected to be. I didn't think that I would make it, but it's kind of, with doing all those slippers, that, that's what really helped the last couple weeks. So, let's see, what's next? I started wa I started watching some new podcasts. Not re not really new podcasts. Um, I started watching pod podcasts this week again. I'm trying to get caught up. I I watch my regulars that I watch the um, you know dramatic knits and um, rain lover dragonfly soars. Mommy needs yarn is on hiatus for Christmas so. She hasn't had any new episodes. Um, the Knit Girls and Round the Twist. I think those are pretty much my my absolute regulars. Um, I was falling behind on a couple. I think I caught up on some. Oh, and Wolf Farms, I watch them every week. There's certain ones that I try and watch the same week that they're recorded. So... For instance, um, I I know which days they record. Wolf Farms always records on Monday. Knit Girls always record on Sunday. Um, <clears throat> Dramatic Knits typically record Saturday evening. <clears throat> so I'm looking for their episodes right away. As soon as, as soon as like the day after they're supposed to have recorded, because there those there's certain ones that are pretty good about having their episodes on the day that they record every week. So I'm always looking for those. And then to see other ones that have bumped around. I mean, I know that life gets in the way, but it's hard to say, it's hard to keep up with a podcast when you're waiting for something to come out on Wednesday and then it doesn't come out and then it comes out on Friday, but you don't go back to look at that until the next week and then you've got two episodes. So... That's that's what usually what happens is why I fall behind on certain ones, and I have been watching the Stockinette Zombies. Um, I did catch up on Purple Purple Photo Kitty this week. Brit Knits I caught up on this week. Um, I have been listening to audio podcasts at work in the morning when the guys are in the office. This week. On the um, the podcast shout out that I'd like to do for um, fluffy fibers is the is a new podcast audio podcast that I've been listening to, and <clears throat> she is French, but she does an English podcast. I don't know. She must do a French podcast too because she says it's the French podcast in English. So maybe she does a French podcast as well, <clears throat> but. There's just something about her voice that I like to listen to. She talks a lot about sewing, which I'm not so much interested in. But again, there's just something about her voice and her accent that is just very calming. And so when I'm at work and I'm just doing general stuff around the office, it's, it's nice to listen to. So I've been listening to that one. So if you haven't checked her out, go and check her out. She does have, like I said, she does, the first part of her show is mostly about sewing. She does a lot of sewing for herself. She is pregnant and she's going to be having a baby soon. I'm not sure when the baby is due. Because I think I've only listened to a couple of episodes. <clears throat> but um, she does do a lot of sewing for herself and she's planning on sewing for the baby. But she also knits and she does occasionally put in a recipe at the end. And um, the other one that I want to talk about is the two Knit Lit Chicks. 
which I think I talked about last week. But the reason I want to talk about it this week is because I they mentioned something about tagging their projects. Now, I can't remember if I talked about this last week because <clears throat> my mind was pretty foggy last week and I didn't have very good notes. But <clears throat> one of the ladies, and I think it was the mother, I think that's Barb, and the other one's name is Tracy, which I mentioned last week that I thought her name was a T name, and I wanted to say Teresa, but I did think that was right, but her name is Tracy. Um, she tags her projects, her favorites, and her cues with as much information as she can, which I thought was quite interesting. I've always tagged that kind of stuff with, like, if, I'm, if it's a shawl, I'll just tag it with shawl. But she mentioned that she tags it with the weight of the yarn... Um, if it's a sweater, she might tag it with a card, like say it's a cardigan or top down or seamless or whatever. As much information as she can so that when she's searching her queue, if she wants to do a specific type of sweater and she's searching her favorite, she can just look at just those items. So I thought that was quite interesting. So I've kind of been going back through my favorites and queue trying to add additional tags to those items so that it makes searching much easier. I think the fingering, the, the weight, the weight of the yarn, fingering, worsted, sport, I think that's, that alone is going to add huge <clears throat> search potential to uh, finding things. <clears throat> And I also have been listening to Cast On. Now, I used to listen to Cast On a long time ago. And I think she went on a hiatus for a while. And I don't know. Anyway, I have been listening. She's like, I think she's now on a weekly schedule doing shorter episodes, which is kind of nice. But one thing that she mentioned on her show that I listened to this week was an app called Knit Handy. And she mentioned, and she said that she really liked it, and I immediately went out and downloaded it. <clears throat> now, <clears throat> I think the app is $1.99 or $2.99 or something like that. It's not free, but I didn't think it was more than $2.99. I, I want to say it was $1.99. And it's an app. It's kind of like a um, a projected amount of yarn that you need for a specific for a project in a specific gauge. <clears throat> so I downloaded it, and it is pr quite cool. So what you're going to do to select your project? So you let's say you're at the yarn store, and you say you find some yarn, you want to buy some yarn for a sweater. You don't have a specific sweater in mind, but you look at the you look at the um, the ball band and you get the gauge and whatnot. So you go in this app and you actually can choose a sweater. Now I'm assuming that it's a long sleeve sweater because there's no other options. You choose the gauge. So let's say your your um, your gauge is five stitches per inch. You choose your size you know, what size bust measurement you have, and it gives you the estimated yardage that you need of that yarn. I think that's totally cool. And it has gloves, hats, mittens, scarves, socks, sweaters, tams, and vests. So that is really, really cool. And, <clears throat> excuse me, I just went into the socks. The socks go from five stitches per inch to nine stitches per inch and really some of my socks are ten stitches per inch but whatever it's still socks is not you don't it's not as difficult to buy yarn for but um but it does kind of give you an idea because it tells you a seven and a half inch circumference foot is for eight year old to a woman small an eight inch woman's or eight inch circumference foot is a woman's medium. An eight and a half is a woman's large. 
um, a nine inch is a men's small, a nine and a half is a men's medium, and a ten and a ten inch circumference sock is a men's large. So if you're knitting a ten a men's large, which is a ten inch circumference, that's a pretty darn big foot. Um, on a nine inch gauge or nine stitch gauge, you need six hundred and fifty four yards. It's pretty cool. I don't know how much I'll use it because <clears throat> I'm going to try in the future to only buy yarn when I have a specific project in mind because I think that's why my <clears throat> stash has gotten so big because I buy yarn because it's a sale or whatever and I don't have a specific project in mind and then when I do have a project in mind, I tend to go and buy yarn for that specific project. So, so let's go ahead and talk about the yarn diet. Because that is going to be a big thing. After knitting in the mitten, my friends and I had decided on our drive home that we are going to go to Rhinebeck next year. I've never been to Rhinebeck. I have been to Maryland Sheep and Wool once for about an hour. My mother lives about 20 minutes away from the fairgrounds and I scheduled to go and visit her during that weekend. And we had plans to stay at the fairgrounds much long longer, but my sister happened. Anyway, <clears throat> so we're planning on going to Rhinebeck in 2012, which is, I believe, the third weekend in October. And I know that if it's anything like Stitches Midwest, I am going to spend a good bit of money. And I probably need to save up for that because, first of all, we're going to have travel time, you know, gas money and whatnot. We're going to have our hotel, and we're going to have to eat, <clears throat> and then a yarn budget. So that's the, that's the first thing, is that I need to, instead of spending money now, I need to save the money so that I have the money to spend at Rhinebeck. Now, I've been checking out <clears throat> some of the groups on Ravelry and the threads for Rhinebeck, and there's people that say, oh yeah, I budget $1,000 for Rhinebeck. Now, I spent a good bit of money at Stitches Midwest, but I can't imagine spending $1,000 on yarn. I mean, not that I wouldn't have the money to spend on it if I saved up between now and then, but I got a lot of stuff at Stitches Midwest, and I didn't spend close to that. <clears throat> anyway, <clears throat> so what my plan is, is that I need to knit from stash until Rhinebeck. Now, I think there's a couple other podcasters that are also doing a, a yarn diet <clears throat> between now and different events. I think um, Diane from Knittables is doing one until SSK. Who else is doing a yarn diet? There's a couple others that are doing yarn diets. Anyway, I'm going to do mine until Rhinebeck, but I am going to give myself a little bit of leeway. And here are the stipulations. First, my goal is to knit at least 2,000 yards every single month. And if I knit 2,000 yards, if I, if I meet my, my goal, then I can buy yarn if it's going to be cast on immediately. If it's a project that I want to start right away. Um, <clears throat> and if it's a gift or whatever. But I have to meet my 2,000 yard minimum first. Because I have so much yarn. If I keep buying at the rate that I've been buying it's going to be insane. So that's my, that's my plan. I want to try and knit 2,000 yards a month 
and and then if I do then I can buy some yarn and I'm I'm gonna try and keep it limited because I do want to save up so that I can buy stuff at Rhinebeck um, because if I spend all my money before Rhinebeck I won't have any money to spend at Rhinebeck so that's the plan so yarn diet coming up next year speaking of kind of stash downs I wanted to get your opinion now I've really enjoyed doing the knit your stash challenge and my idea was to continue it every single quarter so this knit your stash challenge ends December 31st and I was looking at some of the at the thread and there's a number of people that have met the goal and it well exceeded it <clears throat> but I wanted to find out from you guys if you wanted to do another yardage challenge like that so if you wanted to do another knit your stash challenge for the first quarter and knit 6,000 yards between January 1st and March 31st and again the same rules will apply I'm gonna try and work in um, some type of spinning um, yardage so that you can include spinning yardage as well um, so we either gonna do that where there's a three month a three month um, challenge or we can do a one month challenge where we can do something like what dramatic knits does where he has a race to the finish where he does a finished object you post all your finished objects and then you're entered to win so my thought is is we can do a drawing once a month for finished objects or we can do a quarterly drawing for <clears throat> a bigger a bigger goal so let me know what you think I'm gonna put a poll out on the board so that you can vote and decide do we want to have a monthly challenge where we can just post our finished objects of whatever you're working on and then you'll get entered into the drawing or do you want to do a a bigger challenge where you knit so many yards I'm kind of gearing towards the the finished object one because then you can use it in so many different places you can get more entries because if you finish um, multiple objects in that month you can post them and get entered to win so let me know I'm not I'm not 100 percent set on what I'm gonna do in January I do know that I want to continue to do some kind of challenge to continue to motivate me to um, knit down my stash and to work through it um, I like to also motivate you if you've got large stashes to try and work through your stash and not necessarily buy so much so let me know what you think so I have some stash enhancement to show you and it's not even everything that's coming I have been kind of on a bit of a spending spree the last couple of weeks I was homesick on s Monday and I was just looking at everything wanting to buy because I know that I'm going on this yarn diet come January 1st and I'm trying to think ahead and think what am I gonna need yarn for after January that I'm not gonna be able to buy so I placed an order with Jimmy Beans because I oops, I know I want to start my Master Knitters program in January and I need some yarn I ordered Cascade 220 in the natural colorway I ordered three skeins I don't think I'm gonna need three skeins to do the swatches but I wanted to have enough because I know that you're supposed to do all your swatches in the same yarn I ordered three skeins just to make sure I had enough so I have that on hand so that I can do my my uh, master knitters and my ears are 
all of a sudden getting clogged up. I do have some extra Cascade um, 220 that I'll be using for the hat. There is a, um, a hat that you have to do jogless joins on. <clears throat> so I will be, I have some other 220 that I'll be using for that. But so I did order three skeins of natural just so that I can do my swatches. But at the same time, oh, I'll have to get it the next time I pause because I do have some of the prizes that I want to show you for the prize, the drawings that are coming up. And I also ordered a skein of Lorna's Laces in the um, Vera colorway because I have some of this already, but I decided that I was going to give it away in one of the drawings, which I will show you shortly. So I ordered a skein of that to replace it. <clears throat> so that's what I got from Jimmy Bean's Wool this week. And then on Monday, Miss Lois from Nitty's My Bag enabled me to buy some Spinning Fates. I had asked about when I was sick on Monday in a home and I was bored out of my mind. I was knitting, but you know, you know how it gets when you're homesick. I plurked and I asked people what their favorite yarns were because I know I'm going on this yarn diet and I wanted to get some of the yarns that I want to try out, put in my stash so that I can play while I'm on my diet. <clears throat> well, I checked out Spinning Fate's website and she didn't have any anything that really caught my eye. Then about an hour later, no, it wasn't even that long, maybe, I don't know, how long? It must have been half hour, maybe 45 minutes. She must have made an update and Lois plurked about the update and I immediately went over there and bought this. This colorway is Breakfast at Tiffany's, and it's uh, Superwash Merino. It's 490 yards. And now, Lois, I know why you're so addicted to this yarn. I took this out of the package, and I'm like, oh, my gosh. <clears throat> I just got this, I think it was Thursday. It wasn't yesterday. I think it was Thursday. But... I need to go back and see what else she has because I need to buy more of this yarn before I go on my diet because I know that as soon as I knit this up, I'm going to want to knit more. So this is luscious. If you have not tried this yarn, just to touch it and feel it and squish it, <clears throat> it's awesome. Again, it's 100% super wash, three ply fingering weight, 490 yards per skein. And this is the Breakfast at Tiffany's colorway. Yummy. I can't wait to knit this up. I have a feeling it's going to be sometime very soon. But probably not until I buy another skein because you know how that is. You don't want to use it. You want to hoard it until you have multiple sta multiple skeins in your stash. <clears throat> So that was Spinning Fates and my nip and my um, Jimmy Bean's wool purchase. Then I also got some D-Stash. And I don't remember who I got it from, but it's the yarn or the fiber is Into the Whirl. And it was from a D-Stash. And I got two. She had two bumps of this. And I saw the colorway and I loved it pink and green. It's a dark green than what I usually use, but you need a little variety. It's pink and green. Hello. <clears throat> Each bump is four ounces and it is the ribbon candy colorway and it is superwash BFL top. So that is exciting. And again, it's into the world. And this is just her card. So, yeah. So I got two of those from a D-Stash. And it got so bad this week with my purchases that I had to make a spreadsheet. And really, it's not really a spreadsheet. It's just 
a um actually it's a email draft so I have it in an easy place of the stuff that's coming so I remember what I've ordered excuse me so I had two bumps of that so eight ounces of that and then I think it was two weeks ago um, Diane from Knittables talked about ordering fiber from Blue Moon Fiber Arts and I ordered this this is um, eight ounces of Polworth in the colorway Grinchy. Isn't this fun? Now the 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 um what what I thought was going to be pinky is more peachy. Now now that I think about it, I think that when I saw it in the thing, it was more peachy. So I think I'm going to like this because of the bright greens, and the peach will add a little bit of a color variation to my pinks all the time. It's more of a peachy pink rather than a bright pink. But I love it. It's eight ounces and you I don't know if all of the Blue Moon Fiber Arts is custom done but you order it and then they dye it up for you I think. But yeah, 8 ounces of Polworth. I can definitely see, if I enjoy spinning this fiber, I can definitely see spinning, buying more of this. Because the Blue Moon Fiber Arts colorways are awesome. You know, the socks that rock and whatnot. <clears throat> so, I can definitely see buying more if I enjoy spinning this fiber up. It's not as soft as some of the Merino tops that I have, I have um, felt lately. But... We'll see how how it turns out. <clears throat> I think I want to say that the Cloud Lover fiber for um, the Knit Girl Spin Along Knit Along was Polworth, but that seemed to be a little bit softer. I'm sure that different sheep provide different um, softness of wool, so we'll see how it goes. It's not it's not as soft as the other stuff that I've been using lately, but. It's definitely going to be very cool. <clears throat> so yeah, so that has been my stash enhancement for this week. <clears throat> I still have a lot more coming. But, oh, I did bring it over. <laughs> I was thinking I didn't bring over the prizes, but I did. I put them in this bag because I didn't want the cats to get at them. So, let me, I've, I have all the prizes that I've been keeping in this bag. I'm missing my the tensions for my Lazy Kate on my bug on uh, Viola my ladybug wheel. I put somewhere because I didn't think I was going to use them and now I'm looking for them and I can't find them. So I'm looking in this bag thinking maybe I put them in this bag because I was using this bag at one point. Okay but they're not in here. Anyway, let me show you some of the prizes that we're going to have for the drawings that are coming up. The drawings that are coming up are um, in January. The first episode in January that I do is going to be your, the Knit Your Stash Challenge drawing and the thousand member drawing. Now, <clears throat> we're well over a thousand members right now and I'm going to go ahead and include everybody who joined the group between now and January when I do the drawing. I think we're at like, um, I don't know, close to 1100 members right now. <clears throat> and I'm sure that there's going to be more members joining. So if you haven't joined the group on Ravelry and you want to be entered in the drawing, Go and join the group because I am going to include whatever number it is that we get to by the time I do the drawing. And then we have also the um, Magrathea drawing that will be coming at the end of February if you finish your, um, I'm sorry. That one is also going to, oh, uh, okay. I have the first podcast in February, which is right, yeah. The Knit Your Stash and the Thousand Member Drawing 
are going to be the first podcast in January. The Magrathia and the Colorwork Mitten are going to be the first podcast in February. So if, you've, if you're joining the Magrathia Knit Along, you have to finish your shawl and post it in the finished objects thread. And the same thing goes for the mittens. If you're doing the mitten knit along, um, finish your mittens and post them in the finished object thread <clears throat> in the group. You must be a member of the group to win a prize. And when there are multiple prizes for the same drawing, you can't win more than once. So I don't know. There's only one prize in here that I know specifically which drawing is going to be, and that is this. Oh my! This is Lulamai's Twin in the Petite Poison number 5 medium colorway. Um, this is going to be a prize for the Magrathia Knit Along, which is the um, Knit Along that we're using our Vulmais. So I thought, what a good way to do um, is to give another prize for Vulmais. So that's one drawing that I know for sure that that's going to go in the Magrathia Knit Along. Everything else in here, I haven't decided what drawing is going to be in, but I'll show you what it's going to be. So maybe you need to <clears throat> join all of them, and then if it's one that you want to join, the one if it's a prize you want to win, you'll have an opportunity. Then I have the um, Knitter's Handbook. Somehow, I ordered two of these books. I don't know how that happened, but I did. <clears throat> so that's going to be one of the prizes. And the same thing goes with this book, the Wendy Johnson toe, um, Socks Toe Up. That's another prize. Here is the Lorna's Laces Verna, Vera, Vera <clears throat> colorway. That's going to be a prize. Then we have Toe Footsies sock yarn and we have um, this sock yarn and oops and we have this project kit which is for a it comes with a skein of yarn and beads and it's for the project is actually for a beaded scarf but you could use it for anything you wish from interlacements. These are all things that I pulled from my stash. So technically I can count them as my D stash, but whatever. This is awesome. This is Southwest Trading Company Bamboo, 100% bamboo. I bought this a while back and <clears throat> it's really soft and I think it would make a lovely shawl. I was thinking I was going to make socks with it, but I really don't think that it's sock material, but it's 100 grams and it's 250 yards, but I think it would make a beautiful drapey, lacy shawl. So that's another prize. And then we have, I talked about this last week, the um, fiber from Dying Arts, because I'm getting a little crazy with the green. I need to slow down on the green because how much green can a girl have? I know Sarah from Rain Lover will say not enough, but because um, green's her favorite color. But I like the bright colors, and although I like green, I like bright, bright colors. So that's another prize. And. Another one is LRA Lace. So again, I don't know what these prizes are. Oh, and there is going to be one other prize. This is going to be kind of a, pro a secret. I haven't decided which, project, which um, drawing it's going to be in. It might be the thousand member drawing. I don't know yet, but it's going to be a, a secret until we draw it. Um, so yeah. This, these are things that are going to be coming up in drawings at some point. I will probably have, uh, for the Magrathia drawing, I'm thinking 
at least at least the skein of wool mice. There might be one other prize for that drawing, depending on how many people actually finish. The um, color work, there's going to be probably, um, there's going to be at least one prize, possibly two, depending on how many people finish. The knit your stash, my thought is there's going to be a prize for everybody who entered. You know, everybody who entered will get um, entered in the drawing. And then there's going to be a prize for at least one prize for everybody who completed and possibly two prizes depending on how many people complete and then the thousand member drawing is probably going to be at least three prizes so that's my thoughts at this moment so that's where we are today I'm hoping to get lots of knitting done and um Hopefully I won't get kicked out of my house with the home energy audit, which is why I'm recording early. <clears throat> I don't know if you're hearing that crinkle. Cody's in his little tube over here. I don't know um, what's going to entail with this thing. They're supposed to be coming in and doing some kind of infrared testing and something where they put some kind of fan or blower on the front door and suck air out or blow air in. I'm I'm hoping, I'm guessing it's not blow air in. I'm thinking it's the suck the air out and then they go around the house and um, it's kind of like a, I don't know, a negative space where if they suck all the air out of the house then, then the places where air is seeping in, they can just determine where that's happening. Anyway, I'm hoping it's not going to be noisy. I'm hoping I don't get kicked out of my house today. My husband is going to be doing this, but I'm going to be prepared to just up and leave if <clears throat> it gets too crazy. I'll just feel really guilty because I leave the cats here to deal with everything. So, but I might have to do that. We'll see how it goes. But I know that I'm going to do knitting today. And that's all I know, whether it's going to be at home or at the coffee shop. <laughs> so, anyway... I hope you're knitting blooms this week, and I will talk to you next week on Christmas Eve. Bye for now.